Hello, and welcome to Spoiler Alert, where I tell you how something was that isn't yet. This week, we're looking at the new magic set, Dragons of Tarkir, with my friend Dan Brown. Hey, how's it going? Now that Fate Reforged is all over and done with, Sarkin has hopped in his DeLorean and gone back to the future to find out that, like, things are different. Yeah, we are finally out of the darkest timeline, and... It's like... Darker now. Yeah, it's like 1984 with dragons. Two plus two equals five. We have always been at war with the Adarka. Yeah, complete with Ojutai's thought police. Basically, all mentions of the old plant are now verboten, and instead, dragon lords rule the sky. Which objectively sucks for like everyone and everything small enough to fit inside of a dragon's mouth. Bite size, you might call it. You wouldn't know how bad things are, though, based off of Sarkin's experience. He seems to be taking this new timeline, like, in stride. Well, yeah, he turned his entire plane's history into a self-insert fix-it pick. So, of course, he likes it. Yeah, things are not going so well, however, for, like, everyone else on the plane of Tarkir on this timeline. Like, particularly the old cons. Yeah, I mean, let's see. Two of them are dead. There's Anafanta, who got too close to the old Absan ways, and is now Anafanta, the friendly ghost. And Sadisi is now basically the undead version of Yzma to her dragon lord, Salumgar. I think she's just waiting for the right moment to betray him. Uh, my hunch is that she's probably working on like some sort of potion to turn him into a uh, giant llama. And the ones who are living aren't doing that much better. Yeah, Surik is now in charge of calling hunts just to get enough food to feed his dragon lord. He's basically a glorified pizza delivery boy. And what about Zerga? Wait, who? Oh, he doesn't ring a bell, huh? You know who things did turn out well for, though? Narset. Yeah, her planeswalker spark got ignited after she ignored all of Ojutai's commands and read every book she could get her hands on, even the illegal ones. Yeah, she's basically the Twilight Sparkle of the multiverse. This is my book, and I'm gonna read it! Of course, she's not the only one who's doing better on this timeline. I mean, the dragon's situation is much improved. Well, to be fair, it's sort of hard to go down from being extinct. Yeah, but more than surviving, David, the dragons are thriving. They are in charge of the five clans, which are named for their respective dragon lords. I'm sure that never gets confusing. We shall conquer the Dramoka. Are we talking about the dragon, or the territory, or the clan? Precisely. Anyway, Dragon Lord Dramoka, Lord of the Underbite, is probably the best dragon to live under if you're a human in this world. Which isn't saying a whole lot considering that she had uh, an offensa executed for doing things, quote, the old way. I think it's uh, more of a testament to just how evil the other dragons are, not how yeah. noble she is. Meanwhile, Ojutai is now leading what used to be the Jeskai, and is referred to as the Great Teacher. Funny, that's not the first person I've heard called that. Golagon, seen here doing his best impression of a proud house cat, is the leader of the clan formerly known as the Mardu Raiders. Now, he's also the only new Elder Dragon to have an ability that is completely useless in the format that's named for Elder Dragons, unless your opponents are playing like Shadowborn Apostle or Pack Rats. Yeah. Uh, Atarka, on the other hand, doesn't so much lead her clan as give them orders, and really, it's just one order in particular. And finally, we have Salungar, seen here, straight pimping. <laughs> he needs to update his style, though. Yeah, you think? <laughs> I mean, that necklace of his is like a thousand years old. Yeah, get with the times, dude. Wearing people around your neck is so last millennium. Pick up a copy of Vogue or something, Salungar, all right? Mm -hmm. So that's it for the plot. You want to talk about the actual card some, maybe? Yeah, we're going to give some like insightful analysis here as to which of these cards are going to be shaking up the standard, modern, legacy, vintage, EDH metagames. No! We've got Gatesmasher, who evidently missed out on his chance to be in a set where he'd have been the star. There's Tread Upon, the most literal trample card ever. Stampeding Elkurd, aka Bambi's Revenge. Epic Confrontation is an accurate representation of an argument over the color of a dress. Dragon Scarred Bear is proof that Colbert was right. These things can't be stopped. Conifer Strider is seen here off to Storm Isengard. And Circle of Elders are all gathered around here discussing the greater good. The greater good. We've got Tail Slash. Wait, wait, is that Charizard? And Summit Prowler is exactly the same, except for the dragon photobombing in the back there. Yeti don't care. Sprinting Warbrute is probably Usain Bolt's favorite card. Wandering Tombshell must be Zombie Kid's favorite thing 
ever. I like turtles. Virulent plague shows that clearly Tarkir was unable to stop Ebola from penetrating their borders. Thanks, Obama. And Ayer Shaman is the prettiest orc around, judging from that heart around. The tube top doesn't hurt either. Twin Bolt is clearly Azula's favorite card ever. Roxasa Gravecaller is indicating that the fish he caught was this big. Flatten is evidently the result of the card Tread Upon. Blood Chain Rager is seen here before getting both age and tetanus. We've got Sight Beyond Sight, which uh, isn't that what Lionel Sword grants? Sword of Omens, give me Sight Beyond Sight. And Hedonist Strove, otherwise known as Goldman Sachs Basement. Yeah, Wall Street would make a lot more sense if they were scrambling to make that much money to appease ravenous dragons. Yes. Ojutai's breath looks like it might just be a little bit too minty fresh. Clone Legion shows all of these copies of people engaging in battle. That sounds a lot like another franchise to me. Ancient Carp must be really magic to be that big. Secure the Wastes is also the main point of a corsetry. And finally, we have Lightwalker seen here on some sort of like rainbow road, but oddly enough, he's not driving a cart. Yeah, that's no way to win the race. Uh -uh. Anyway, that's it for this week's spoiler alert. I want to thank Dan Brown for coming here and doing this with me, and tune in next week when we spoil the latest season of Game of Thrones. And until then, don't say we didn't warn you. Thank you.